come this way. Please sit down. Yes, I have had news from your tutor, and it seems you are the young English aristocrat that I have been expecting. You have your letter of introduction. Well, I'd better look at that, hadn't I? I do know your father, the Viscount. I see that there's quite a lot of very good information here. This is definitely something you will want to keep on your person. So, it seems you would like to embark on a grand tour and you've come to me to help you organize it. Not least, I know, because I have chosen you. As a young English aristocrat, I see you would like to spend about four years touring Europe so that you can broaden your horizons, continue your worldly education in language, geography, architecture, culture and, of course, history, and getting to know the right people. Here, you'd better hold on to that. Do keep it with you. Yes, I have some um, interesting places for you to go, and I think you'll be quite pleased. However, you know that my services do come at a price. Not money. No, you can rest assured. I do know your father, the Viscount, and he has agreed to uh, make sure that I'm well funded for anything that might present itself in your further education and development in Europe. He also knows that I happen to be very well connected. And when you return to England, you will be able to take up your duties as an aristocrat and whatever your father has in store and hopefully continue our association. There's something I require of you on your trip through Europe, but we will get to that later. Yes, I am very well connected in Europe, in certain circles. Only the best, I assure you. I am and have been in England as a guest of Princess Caroline and Princess Amelia. And thank you very much. It was very sad for me when Princess Caroline passed. She died of a broken heart, you know. You didn't. Yes, it was, in my opinion, due entirely to that libertine John Harvey. I told her Lord Harvey was up to no good, a man 
certainly not to be trusted. Mind you, I would never have him in my company. So do be careful, the company you keep. Let's get down to it, shall we? Now, your background. I know that you recently finished at Oxford, have you? Right. And that you have taken very high marks, excelling in philosophy, mathematics, languages, French, Italian, Latin, Greek. Excellent. I also have heard from your tutor that you take a keen interest in cartography, metaphysics. I knew it. I thought so. Yes, that is one of the reasons I have been watching your progress with interest. What, what is your familiarity with uh, Professor Fabry's work in Padua? Mm -hmm. So do you believe in time as a dimension or as a linear progression? Mm -hmm. Very interesting. I think we shall have a very good friendship and association. Into it, shall we? will be traveling with your tutor and in a group. I think it's best, don't you? Yes. You have two other gentlemen and a lady. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Good. What we need to sort out, though, are the details of your trip. Now, firstly, I know that you are quite familiar with geography. But I do have a cursory map here of Europe. This is just so that you can familiarize yourself with where everything is in relation to everything else. As we're here in Britain, in England, and you will be traveling down through France to Italy and to Malta and if events allow 
you may come back up through Germany and the Lowlands. We'll have to see how things develop. All right. Finance is well abroad. I do hope that you have a letter of credit. Are you able to obtain a letter of credit from your father's bank? What do you have there? M my dear, this is a banknote. For five guineas. Do you have more of them? Yes, I don't doubt it. Um, that's fine. Yeah, if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> best paper credit, best and last supply. That lends corruption, lighter wings to fly. Yes, you may try that if you like. I think... I prefer gold, the gold standard, but we'll get to that later. How much gold have you? You see, you don't want to keep a lot of it on your person. That's why I would recommend the bank uh, letter of credit. These banknote for guineas, you know, they might be lost and there goes your money. Someone could steal them from you. Mm -hmm. All kinds of things could happen. Do be careful. With a letter of credit, you can draw on funds in most cities, and even with envoys and fellow nobility, to make any purchases that you like. As much, of course, as your father's bank will allow, which I think is substantial. I have here also some reading that I think is quite appropriate. If you haven't already, I know your tutor is quite thorough. We've got um, Lassell's Voyage of Italy. It's very detailed, very opinionated. So do take some of his opinions lightly. Also very informative. There are several volumes here. And it will make good reading during the long journeys. But I would suggest you make a start beforehand. So you are at your father's house in London, are you? good. It's a, a very good place to start. And your tutor tells me also that you are an experienced sailor, that you don't get sick. That's very important, especially for the journey that you will be making. And you will cross, yes, most people cross, they choose to cross from Dover to Calais because it's the shortest route. It also happens to be one of the roughest routes and very heavy traffic as well. So with my plan, you will be using a ship um, of one of my associates. You will depart out of Southampton and you will arrive in Normandy. Mm. Depending on the weather and tide, your captain will decide where to put in, but it will be a small place because I think the less attention that we attract for certain things, the better. You will understand that soon. So there is your lassels. You can keep that as well. 
yes I can put that together with your map if you like definitely also here's a leaflet you need to take this to the publisher on Fleet Street and he will give you this book by Mr. Nugent about the Grand Tour mm. yes Nugent's Grand Tour is quite new mm. published uh, 49 I believe also, some very useful information on Italy. Nugent provides an exact description of most of the cities, towns, and remarkable places of Europe, together with a distinct account of the post roads and stages with their respective distances through Holland, Flanders, Germany, Denmark, Sweden, Russia, Poland, Italy, France, Spain, and Portugal. Likewise, directions relating to the manner and expense of travelling from one place and country to another. Also, occasional remarks on the present state of trade, as well as the liberal arts and sciences in each respective country. I'll put all of this together for you and I will also give you the name of a contact just in case anything happens in case of an emergency in case the ship should be taken <laughs> well you know that uh, we live in very exciting times and last year a ship was taken in Quiberon Bay not only taken but sunk so I would definitely warn against complacency while traveling so this contact I will give you is in Amsterdam and I will give you another in France. There's someone in Marseille, I think, that will help you. Monsieur Montagu, Rue du Plage, in Marseille. So your typical journey will be quite long uh, because you won't be taking the most used routes. This way you will see more interesting things and of course you will be in contact with some very useful guides. And you will learn everything you need to know about European culture as an English aristocrat. Your first stop will be Paris. Where you will stay at, partly at the ambassadorial residence. Yes, your tutor has all of this contact information for you and you will be able to draw on any funds there that you need. And also, you will be staying at Versailles for a time. 
I've also arranged for you to, to be a guest at one of the palaces along the Loire, Chenonceau. Do you know Chenonceau? You know of it, of course. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, there will be plenty of time for more studies of your classical literature, art, and plenty of parties, I can assure you. Paris will be lots of fun. From there, I want you to travel to Arles and Marseille, where you will have time to refresh your Greek, I would hope. Someone of your status, yes. Mm -hmm. Normally, you would take the overland route through the Alps to go down to Rome. You may do so by boat and it's going to depend on the situation when you arrive at Marseille. Mm -hmm. In Marseille, I have arranged for you to stay at the house of one of the dignitaries. An Italian, yes, he's an Italian emissary from the Kingdom of Naples. So if you take ship from Marseille, you can go to Rome and from there, where you will be staying in one of the villas of my associate, you will be able to travel around the region. There are some very interesting excavations happening. You may stay in Rome, as long as you like, of course, and then continue up or to the north and across to the east, where you will visit the lakes, the cities there, and on to Venice. Now there's a contact I have for you in Venice. This one, I won't write down. But I will give you a map. This is your map of the city of Venice. And you will see the canals. Yeah. And you see St. Mark's Square, San Giorgio. There will be a lot of exploring you can do in Venice. On the reverse, there's some information that I hope you will have a look at. These are details about the life in Venice, dates, cultural observances, military, government, customs fees, this sort of thing. Here you are, please study that. Have a look at Italy, shall we?
you will be spending most of your time there from your base in Rome. Some journeys will take longer than others. There are some excellent excavations at Pompeii and Herculaneum that I think you should visit. Mm -hmm. So you will be in Lazio, in Rome, and then you will come down in the kingdom of the two Sicilies, which is here. You will travel to Sicily, where you will see the ruins that you have on your list from your tutor. Venice is up here. Florence and the lakes in the north. There's Tuscany. Coming back, you may choose on your way, on your return to England, to base yourself in Venice and from there go through the Alps in the north. There's Salerno, where you embark for Sicily and Palermo, and the kingdom of Naples and the island of Sicily. There you can see Naples. This is where your Greek will come in handy. While in Venice, you will of course be treated to many concerts at the Doge's Palace as a guest. You might be tempted as a sailor to explore the Adriatic, these islands are very tempting and very beautiful, but I would warn you to be careful around these islands. Make sure you take an experienced guide. North in the mountains, you will be able to visit Padua on your way. And I know you have friends at the university there. And someone in Sorbonne as well. Which will make your travels a lot more fun. So I will leave it, leave it up to you and your tutor to decide whether you leave the lakes for the return journey or decide to do the lakes and see the alpine towns and cities on your way to Rome. Of course the island of Capri is not to be missed and the Blue Grotto. There are quite a few excavations happening, lots of discoveries and as you can see Sicily will be quite an interesting place. Now the kingdom of the two Sicilies with the palace in Naples will be a place for you to stay. British envoys will of course be able to put you in contact with the right people and put you up should you need it. And there is your map of Italy. You can see that it's very current Mm. All right. Don't neglect your studies. Do you have a proper passport? Mm -hmm. 
way I see it. Oral Raven, yes. Queen's Council, excellent. This you should keep with your letter of introduction. Have that. Mm -hmm. Keep these together. Yes, I would keep them with your notes, your bank notes as well. Mm. I'll put those with your maps for now. But I encourage you to keep them in a very safe place in your coat pocket on your person. If anything should happen, battles by land or by sea, highwaymen, brigands, you at least have that, that assurance. And there are your maps. And now, I should like to give you a task. During these years of discovery and enjoyment, yes, yes, there will be plenty of parties, there will be masquerade balls, as long as you keep your letter of credit from the bank and stay in touch, well connected with all of your associates, make sure the people in your party are well behaved enough, within reason of course, you shouldn't have any trouble at all, you should have a very enjoyable few years. Yes, what I would like you to do is pick up a very special compass that I'm having made by a clockmaker in Malta. This will entail, of course, a sea journey. The person who can take you there you will find in Sicily. Mm -hmm. And I will be able to give you that address. This clockmaker is named Machetto. You don't have to worry about finding him, he will find you. To go to Sicily, you will embark from Salerno and you will arrive in Palermo. There you will be met by this man. Monsieur Machetti. Signore Machetti. And he will take you to his workshop where you will pick up this compass. And this is the reason for what you might perceive as some secrecy. This compass has some special abilities. It's quite new and I don't wish it to fall into anyone else's hands. So I will give you the name. I will write that here. Signore Machetti. give you this for your packet.
you are. And when you have the compass, take it to Venice. To the address I've given you. Yes. So you've got your maps. Your passport. Letters of credit. Guidebooks. I encourage you, in the meantime, to brush up your knowledge of the continent before you go, as well as the current political situation in each country and the current diplomatic climate. Now, if anything should happen, I should give you an address in Venice. And I want you to take this. You've seen these symbols, have you? I would like to know where. Ah, in your tutor's book, I see. I doubt he knows them. Not many people do. These particular ones mean something. Should anything happen, you are to take this paper to the address I shall give you in Venice. And see that you're not followed if possible. And this is something you don't need to tell your traveling companions about. It would be preferable that no one knew about this address that I'm giving you. No one will be there. But you can rest assured that if you arrive with this, you will be taken care of with this. Keep this very safe. I would say to sew it into your coat collar or the lining of a coat that you keep with you. Now, I'm not saying anything untoward will happen, and I certainly don't expect it to. But I want to give you some assurance just in case. And once you pick up this compass, you can carry it back to this address when you return. Yes, I know I can trust you because of your intelligence, your background, your ingenuity and your curiosity. All right. Have a very enjoyable few years. You have all of your contacts. You have your plan. And you know where you're going to stay in Southampton. I shall be in touch. You'll see me. <laughs>